Welcome to Scrapping with Sherry. I wanted to do a layout today using the Summer Denim Collection. Now this is something that you can only get through your advisors or order if you are an advisor, but please contact your local advisor to see about getting this if you like this page layout. Now the Summer Denim Collection has um, some really cute papers. It has this teal stripe with some sunshines on the back. It has a flower that I absolutely love, just a cute floral with a blue on the back, and you know I love the blue. And then it has these cute little buttons in multicolors with um, a khaki gingham on the back. And then I'm gonna be using just one of my cover sheets from one of my other paper packs as a matting. And the Summer Denim also has some cute little embellishments, and we'll pull those out in just a minute. I'll be using my 12-inch trimmer my personal trimmer and i pulled out an older border maker called the dazzle border that i thought would be pretty for this layout so let me show you what we're going to do now i'm using these two papers as my background this is the teal with the diagonal stripes on them and when i show you my photos you'll know exactly why i chose that particular paper the color is just perfect so that will be my background paper. And I'm gonna use this floral first with my dazzle border. And I'm gonna make a border to go across the top of my page using the flowers. Now remember when we use these border makers, we start punching at one of these black lines on either side, it doesn't really matter which, but you line your paper up so that it starts on the black line. And when we do that, we punch the first punch and then slide until we've covered up the blue with our design. Once the blue is covered, you punch again and you just keep sliding and punching, making sure you cover up the blue each time. Now, some of the border makers have um, a little triangle on there as well because the design is so repetitive. This one doesn't have that, but if you have a triangle on the blue, you need to make sure that your design is also lining up on that triangle. All right, so we've got one border. I'm just gonna slide the scraps to the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another one on the opposite side of the page so I don't have to cut and bring my border maker back out and do this over again. So we have those two borders. Now I want those to be kind of wide here at the top. So I'm gonna cut this at about two and a half inches. And I'll put that in my 12 inch trimmer to do that. I'm just gonna line the um, outermost piece at about two and a half inches. And you know what, as I look at it, I almost think I wanna go a little more, but that'll take a lot of my paper. So let's just go at two and a half. And then I'm gonna flip it and do the same thing on this side, lining it up at two and a half inches. And these are gonna be borders along the top of the page. I like the way the, um, little design in this kind of picked up the feel of the flowers. All right, so those are gonna be two top borders. We're also gonna make two bottom borders, but I'm not gonna use the punch for that. I'm just gonna make these straight ones along the bottom. So I'm gonna make these about three inches each because I want kind of a big border along the bottom. So I've got a three and a three. Now the fun part about this flower paper to me is it brings in all the colors. It makes everything tie together. Now I've got just a tiny strip of this left and this is a blue on the back that I really, really like. So I'm gonna just split the difference in this and I've got about a one inch strip, almost, not quite. So I'm just gonna cut this in half and I'm lining it up between the two one inch marks on my cutter to get me a good line there. And because this strip is so thin, when I cut, I'm not gonna push real hard, but I'm gonna slide from the center out and the center up. And that gives me just that nice little blue line here. All right. So let's go ahead and lay these out on our paper to see where we are so far. Right now we've got a border here, 
a border here. Look how cute that looks. I've got the flowers here and here. And then I'm going to take this right through the center right there. Now, because I think these little buttons are so cute as well, I think I'm gonna make just a thin border of these. And you know what? I may slide a thin border of it here and another one here. So let's just cut several half inch borders. Now our half inch mark is right here on the right side of the trimmer. So I'm just gonna cut several half inch. I don't want a giant border at the top because I do wanna have room for my photos. But let's just see what that looks like. Just adds a little more visual interest there. And for this bottom one, let's go at one inch. Make it a little bit wider. So, we've got all of our borders made already. Now, I really do like that hint of blue in there. So, I think I'm going to pull another piece of that. Oh, you know what we could do? Because our blue is here, I hate to waste a whole sheet of paper to pull a couple of borders, but our blue is on the back of these, um, these borders that we made. So let's just cut a little half inch off of that. That'll mimic our half inch here. Cut one off of each of those. Now we're cutting a half an inch off of each of these borders that I already made, just to give me a little more of that blue. All right. Yeah, that's what we want right there. Let's go ahead and get these taped down and then we'll place our pictures. And I am gonna take this one all the way up to the top edge I don't always do that, but I think for this, that's going to be really pretty. I'm taping on the flowers here because we want the blue to show. And we're just sliding that right up against it. And then here, I'm just going to use my regular tape on this because it's not really necessary to tape all those little pieces down. They will be under a page protector soon anyway, and I don't really have to worry about them. They're not really thin pieces that I worry about are gonna catch on a lot of things before I get it page protectored. Oh, look how pretty that is. Let's go ahead and do the bottom. <laughs> My repositionable tape just ran out. And the good thing is you can just pop that cartridge out. I always keep several of these handy. I hate to run out of tape in the middle of a project. I also find that occasionally there's a little gunk right there on the corner. So I just try to clean that out with my fingernail just to keep any tape from sticking to that down the road. Every time I change my tape cartridge, I try to clean that out just to make sure that nothing's gonna stick and cause problems with my tape. So we've got the two pages ready. Now let's look at our photos. And I had only five photos for this layout. I didn't really want to um, cut them down so much that I made it a one-pager. But this was a time when I was staying with my daughter and her family. And I got up to get the baby ready to go to daycare that morning. And she was so sleepy. And she was yawny. And I just thought they were the sweetest little pictures. I couldn't stand not to use them. But like I said, I don't really have lots of space covered up with my photos. So I think what I'm going to do is cut these down a little bit, just cut a little bit of the ceiling off and probably do some more pattern here 
to make a title block maybe. I, I was thinking I would mat these in white just to make them pop. The photos are kind of dark, and if I laid them against the blue background, it's just gonna make them darker. So I can't really take any off side to side because I was doing selfies. So I need to make this um, four and a quarter wide just to be sure that I get all the picture on there because I can't take off the sides. And I'm gonna go ahead and couple of, cut a couple of four and a quarter inch widths. Now I will say that I feel like it would look so much better if I had any kind of horizontal pictures to go here or here, but I just don't. So, you know, we work with what we've got. I'm gonna use my personal trimmer to just cut the tops of the photos down a little, just because there's no reason to have that ceiling, and I think it focuses in a little bit better when we cut a little ceiling off. It's also gonna give me a little bit more room to put my matting here. Now, I love her little baby hands. I think they're so sweet, so I hate to cut them out of pictures, but here she's got that thumb popped in her mouth, so I can cut that off a little bit, and put these two together on a mat and then make this a mat of its own. And over here, I'll kind of do the same look. I'm cutting off top, we got her little baby hand right there. And I'll cut off a little top and even a little bottom here to put that in a mat together. I do like matting together. I, I think it's probably the lazy aspect of me that likes that, but I do think it looks really nice when you put the photos together on one mat, when you can, doesn't always work. But I'm just gonna slide these photos onto this one mat. <laughs> photo that we need to mat. I was going to see if I have enough left over to weld this together. Y'all know I just hate wasting anything. So let's see. That's going to work. We may only need one piece of that. Yep, we will. And I still have a few more scraps there. Now for welding, all I'm doing is butting the edges of these papers up against each other. I just run my tape right over them. And then, let me make sure it's gonna fit. You know what, I'm gonna cut just a touch off the bottom here. Nope, that's her hand. I'm gonna cut a touch off my hair. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I go ahead and put tape on the four corners of my photo and just stick it down to that welded piece. And then trim it out like it's a full piece of paper. That's the best way I found to use up all those scraps so you're not sticking little bitty pieces back down in your organization system to clog up your binder folders or whatever you use to organize your leftover pages, pictures, scraps. All right, now I am really liking this design so far. I was going to look at what I have left over still. And I still have some more of this little button paper that I think might be cute right here. So I think I'm going to cut, um, let's look, use our zero centering ruler and just see how much we could cut there. Because I think I'm going to use my silhouette machine and do a title there. I think I'm going to cut it about five by three and a half. So in order to keep this so I might have a border down the road, I'm gonna cut the three and a half off this lengthwise piece of paper. Three and a half. And you need to be mindful of your scraps that you're using them in a way that's going to allow you to use them even more down the road. Now I could have chopped that piece into all kinds of little pieces and parts, and then I would not have anything left to do borders later. But look, I've still got enough of this to do borders, to do some mats. Um, there's still a good bit of that left over. And I like the look of this button on there. 
I was thinking I might do cute as a button here, but I'm not sure about that. We'll see in a minute. So let's pull out our embellishments. I almost feel like I want a little piece of that behind there. What do you think? I kind of think that would be pretty. So if we cut this one down just a shade more, just top to bottom, we could get that in there and double mat our title. And then I'll probably go back with some blue, not that blue because I'm stingy and using my patterns for titles, but I'll cut me a little title to go on there perhaps. Okay, let's go ahead and add this on. So we've double matted this pretty little title box, journaling box. I do need to journal on this. I need to talk about what was going on at this particular point in time. So I need to be aware to leave space for journaling. Now I wouldn't want to journal on this because to me that's a little bit busy, but this would be a great place to add a journaling box. All right, let's pull out the embellishments and see what we've got for this. I absolutely love this embellishment. I think it is so cute and so apropos for this sweet baby. So a part of me thinks it needs to go over here to bring more blue. I could add it here because it is about the same size as my photo. That's kind of a nice look. I could slide these apart maybe and stick it in here. But I really think I like this right here. Now, remember I said I need to do some journaling on this. But what I may do with my journaling is pull it down in this area here. I could always do a little white block of paper and do my journaling down on the bottom edge right there. So, we've got this little embellishment. I do think it needs a mat behind it as well. And I think I'm going to go back with this. Now, that kind of negates keeping this big piece of paper for a border, but, you know, we got plenty of paper, right? I'm going to trim this really close, make it just a little bit smaller since I'm going to mat it. And if you're wondering where this came from, this was actually the inside cover sheet for this embellishment pack. We don't waste anything, do we? We use every little bit of packaging scraps we can get. All right, so I've cut that in a lot closer. And I'm just going to... Still, I've got enough to do a border there, so I'm going to cut the straight line down first. Still got plenty to do a border. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right here. Now I'm almost thinking because we've got this embellishment here, I may wanna pull this one down to the bottom just to offset those just a little bit. The You Are My Sunshine could be the whole title. And if that's the case, I could just put a little block of white in here, do my journaling. Let's see if there are any other embellishments we want to use. And I'm looking, y'all, the leftover paper that we've got is only these little pieces right here, which would make a really great little border. But how fun is it to go through and use so much of one thing that you don't have to store a lot of little scraps. Let's check out these other embellishments and see what we've got to play with. Sunny days. I'm not sure my granddaughter felt like a sunny day right there. The little envelope's cute. What a life is cute. There's a button. Good vibes. I love the little pocket. I think that's adorable. Little sunshine, several little sunshines. Pocket full of sunshine, that's cute. I don't necessarily want it over there when I've got this bigger title here. But we could do something like this. 
and then bring in the sunshine. Pop that right up there. That brings my color top to bottom. And then maybe over here, go back and add some of those flowers to mimic this or add them here on our little box. I do think that's about to become a journaling box. Anything else? All right, that's it because I like the khaki since we have it in three places that draws your eye across. All right, and that's where this page is going to stop until I get my journaling ready to do. I say that there's one other little embellishment in this package that I didn't see. Let's see what it says because it might be perfect. Uh, loving this. Yeah, that's always perfect. And I'll put that right there. So let me pull out my foam squares and we'll go ahead and finish this out. All right, so we gotta stick this one down. And because I have a predetermined box here, I will probably type up my journaling for this so I can make sure I get it in the right space and um, then just tape it probably right in the center of that. I'll try to keep it so several of the buttons show just because that's where a lot of our little color is right there. But we can't forget the journaling. I have no doubt 10, 15 years from now, I won't remember what any of these things were about. I don't know if you notice it or not, but anytime you use a print that is an exact print, it is so easy to line up your photos, your mats, whatever you're lining up because you can line them up against the same places on the print. I do love to use prints as backgrounds for that reason. It just makes a lot of things easier to line up. Now, you know I like everything kind of touchy-touchy. I don't think, I don't like things way out in left field away from each other. So I try to draw everything into the center as much as possible. Okay. That page is finished. Let's go ahead and tape this one down and we'll add those couple of embellishments. And then I will journal and you'll see that finished product at the end of the video. Now again, this, this um, particular pack is really cute and it is only available through advisors. So if you are not an advisor, Speak with your advisor to see if he or she can locate that for you because it's a cute, cute pack. Let's see what I did. I just laid that tape down. I laid my picture down right on that tape. All right, a couple of foam squares on this little sunshine. And I do feel like that needs to be up at the top since it's a sunshine. I just don't feel like it would be appropriate to have a sunshine down on the bottom of the page. And a couple of little foam squares on this. And there's our completed layout. I hope you enjoyed this layout. This would be great for a lot of different um, paper packs. Anything that has some type of print that draws all your colors together, I think is a really good choice for this. And lots of different border punches would be great for this. So play around with this idea. Let me know what you think. And until next time, happy scrapping. Mm -hmm.